Dear Mom and Dad, I know that you are hurting. I'm hurting too. I feel and feed off your tension, fear, and shock. Although I am young and cannot express verbally what is happening in our lives, I am still feeling the impact. My heart is broken every time I have to give up a parent. My sense of security is lost. Please don't assume that I am resilient. Please don't assume that my life will be exactly as it was and that I will continue to feel the same love from both of you. I am a human being just like you. My needs are just like yours. I need love, attention, nurturing, stability, consistency, affection, understanding, patience, and mostly to be wanted. When you fight over me or put me in the middle of your argument, you are sending me the message that winning with each other is more important than my life. I am learning from you that it is better to be right than to be loved. You are teaching me that I came from a person who is unlovable and wrong, and that I am somehow wrong too. When you confide your hurt in my heart, you are storing up adult pain and robbing me of my childhood. You are taking away my belief that love is unconditional and replacing it with a message that tells me to become hard and not to love because I will get hurt and not be able to recover. You may not understand this today, and I am so small that you are not thinking about my future, but you are putting me at a greater risk of getting a divorce myself. At times, you are risking my safety to fill a void in your heart. My safety is your job. Without you and your protection, I am unshielded from the world. This will manifest in irrational fears for me, because I will stay in a state of fight or flight for most of my life. Someday, this initial shock will wear off but how you choose to parent me through this crisis will never wear off. I will either feel your sense of selflessness, support, protection, or I'll have a scar on my heart with a message that reads, good things happen to good people. I must be bad. Thoughtfully, the child of divorce. Jesus, in describing the work that he was doing, said, The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And Matthew claims that Isaiah said this about the Messiah, that he would not crush the weakest reed. In fact, instead he would try and restore it. Or he would not put out a flickering candle, and instead he would try and keep it burning. This is, I believe, the image of kids in divorce. It's, it's the image of what Jesus did and what he continues to do today, and, and it is the image that I have and that I see uh, of, of what happens with kids in divorce. Uh, it's an opportunity, it's a ministry that comes alongside people who are blinded, affected uh, by the devastation of divorce. They're blinded by their, their anger and their frustration and their hopelessness. It's a ministry that comes alongside people who are in the thick of it and, and helps to bring some sense of restoration. Right? It helps them, it comes alongside people who, who may seem just paralyzed in certain types of feelings and emotions in that situation and it comes alongside them and it, it lifts them up and Gives them space, a safe place, and maybe a way to walk and move, move forward. It's a, it's a ministry that comes alongside people who are affected by divorce, and it, it brings good news. And it paints a picture and helps give them a sense of, of hope. The people who actually care, it's a ministry that comes alongside people, and it meets them where they are, in the thick of it. That's kids and divorce. And so as we've gone throughout the month and we've talked about different ministries that take place, uh, not just at North Point, but in the world, uh, as we've seen last week, um, this Sunday, you're going to have the opportunity to learn a little bit more and hear a little bit more about kids and divorce. And um, if you're visiting with us, we don't do this every Sunday, but um, you know, I typically do preach. Um, so you know, don't count yourself lucky that you come here and there's no mess. Uh, however, 
today you have the privilege, and I'm privileged to welcome uh, Beverly Ritz, the director of Kids and Divorces, to stage with me. So please give her a hand as she goes through. And Beverly is also our children's minister. Um, and you'll, you'll see how all this kind of really flows in together today. And so Beverly, if you'll briefly explain to us, especially for those people who don't know what Kids and Divorce is and how, how you became involved in it. Okay. Kids and Divorce is a support group for families that are going through a divorce. The same parent comes with the children. We have uh, eight sessions where we address uh, the issues that children of divorce often face. Uh, they often face a lot of changes in their lives. Many times um, there were, the children's worlds are just absolutely turned upside down. So <clears throat> we address changes, we address the feelings they have, um, that they have a hard time expressing. We address their, um, their anger, their fears, their worries, the feelings they have of rejection and resentment, which they often feel uh, because of the divorce in their family. Um, we talk about um, guilt uh, because they often feel like it's their fault. And uh, we like to reassure them that divorce is not their fault. It is an adult problem that they didn't do anything to cause that divorce. But you'll be surprised at what they get in their little minds sometimes. We read a book called Was It the Chocolate Pudding? And the little boy got pudding on the wall. Uh, he got up to help his baby brother get the pudding, and they got it all over the wall. Mom comes in, and she's... Um, mad and angry and she leaves and the next thing she knows he's there he knows they're getting a divorce so he thinks it's his fault because he got the chocolate pudding on the wall so those little minds think very differently than we realize um we talk about forgiveness that's a big big issue for anyone going through a divorce uh, trust is another issue we talk about the holidays because the holidays are exceptionally hard for kids in divorce. And our last session is called Survivors, and we um, focus on the kids that are in the group and their exceptional um, qualities, and we just do our best to build them up and remind them of all the, the things we've talked about and learned in ways they can cope with what they're dealing with at the time. So um, Kids in Divorce is a safe place. Uh, when you come to Kids in Divorce, uh, we don't tell anybody you're at Kids in Divorce. Uh, we've had our own people come through Kids in Divorce, and we don't talk with anybody else in the church about who is at Kids in Divorce. It is confidential. We keep that confidential just to respect those families. And um, so it's uh, um, our philosophy is... Um, and I meant to tell everybody, I, did, I got home at 9 o'clock last night from Disney World. <laughs> and I spent my week with a 3-year-old and a 6-year-old. And uh, so my brain is like, you know, kind of fried. So anyway, if it, does, if it don't make sense today, that's why I don't make sense. I'm sitting there, literally sitting there in church going, oh, I didn't get a puppet for that children's worship. And so I'm getting up in the middle of church. Sorry, y'all, I don't like to do that, but sometimes I forget. So now I don't remember what I was saying. So anyway... Uh, <laughs> He it's loves normal. He, it he is. blames it on Disney, but we all know it. He loves and he loves he loves to laugh at me. But the, the what was the question? <laughs> I'm serious. No one I'm done. Uh, what what is what is yeah, what yeah, yeah. what is kids at work? Okay, I think I pretty much explained that. So help help, okay. help me understand. Don't you love it? I absolutely love working with these two, three here. It's just a blast. Um so help us understand how you became involved in it. Oh, Tell yeah. us a little bit about your story. Okay, okay. My story. Well, I was divorced many, many years ago. I hate to t tell you when because it gives away my age. I think everybody knows my age. But anyway, um, it was not something I wanted in my life. I was very, very sad to get a divorce. I did not want a divorce in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But I got one. So um, that happened, and I, um, I had a four-year-old daughter who... Um, was extremely upset. We couldn't get shoes on. We couldn't get clothes on. Just nothing fit right, felt right, because nothing was right in her life. And um, I went through um, divorce recovery 
support group and it began to make all the difference in the world for me pointed me in a direction that I very very much needed and I really don't think God lets you go through something like that um, without letting you come out on the other end and helping other people and so I always had this desire to help other people through a divorce and I did that in many many ways um, with groups at church and things like that but when I became a children's minister, um, and full-time children's minister in the year 2000, there was a little girl in our church who had uh, lost both of her parents in a very tragic situation. Um, and the little girl stopped me one day and showed me her ring and said, hey, this is my mommy's ring. And I, I know you've heard this, some of you heard this story last year, but this is what motivated me to realize that if I was going to be a children's minister and help children who were hurting, I had to educate myself and find out how to do that. So about that time, an organization called Christian Works for Children was um, starting their Grief Works program, which is a ministry for children who have someone in their family die. So I went for the training for that, and I became one of their facilitators, and I was one of their group facilitators uh, for children in grief for 10 years and they wanted to start a program for kids in divorce and I ended up being that person that coordinator and helping to develop that curriculum the video that you saw was written by the person that co-authored the curriculum with me and she was a child of divorce five times before the age of 12 so the emotions that came out in that video were a lot of, of her emotions but anyway that's how I got connected to this and um, I recently well last year resigned from Christian Works as I worked for them on a part-time basis with the blessing of our shepherds here and really that has only enhanced um, our ministry here in so many ways because the needs are very very great for people who are going through a divorce and I can help them and now we have other people trained who can help them because we have we have this group okay so you've touched on this a little bit but help us a little bit more better understand you know why support groups are like this are important I think oftentimes when people hear about a support group and they, they just I'm not so sure that we stop to think what it is and why it's important especially if well even if we go through it I mean even if if we we are kids of divorce or people who have gone through a divorce uh, you know we, sometimes people think well that's just that's not for me or what just kind of help us understand why this is so important okay well I'm gonna just read you a little bit of statistics here and um, these are old statistics so I don't you know I haven't researched recently but each year over 1 million American children suffer the divorce of their parents more over half of the children born this year to parents who are married will see their parents divorce before they turn 18 of these children close to half will also see the breakup of a parent's second marriage now let me just talk about that a minute that's because you don't figure out what went wrong. When I mean, you don't figure out what went wrong in the first one, you get right back in a relationship, the same issues are going to surface and surface, and you're going to end up with that same scenario. Um, one out of every ten will also live through three or more parental breakups. Forty percent of children growing up in America today are being raised without their fathers, and that percentage may even be higher now because that is a little, little bit of an older statistic. So as you can see, the need is very, very great because it's just rampant. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because the, I had the privilege of um, you know, leading the, the teens for a while, and every, every person is different, and everybody kind of deals with this differently. Um, but I'm telling you, seeing, especially several different groups that we've had, seeing what, we, what, what, they, what you start with and then when it's all said and done, seeing where these people are. And honestly, <laughs> it, it's just, it, is simply, it is amazing the impact that something like this you know, has on these people in individual lives. But I've seen it especially within the teens, and I've seen some of it through some of the adults as well, but I, my focus is more on the teens, and so uh, it just makes a huge impact um, on them. You know, I've said this a couple weeks ago, just knowing that someone is actually concerned about you and what you're going through, um, 
it's very powerful, even if you don't realize that it's having an effect on you, okay? And I think a lot of these people who go through this probably don't realize how much of an impact it has on them until really the very end, right? So, uh, so you know, how many years have we been doing this? I now? think this is our fourth year to do this. I've been doing groups since 2009. Okay. And have we, did we just start with one session a year? or has it always No, we did two. We, we do two sessions a year. We used to do uh, fall and spring, but now we do fall and winter because it just flows better for facilitators just to go ahead and, and okay. do that. So, you know, we've seen, we've, we've had some time seeing this, but obviously you've been involved in this way longer than, you know, kids in divorce here at North Point. Um, but, okay, so when we talk about ministry like this and the impact that it has, um, help us understand how you've seen God work, work through this. Well, um, first of all, he's worked through me, uh, mainly because I never, ever dreamed I would do anything like this. Um, and the curriculum that was written was written, uh, published by Christian Works and is available for sale to churches. We didn't have to pay for it. But, uh, it's available to sale uh, for churches and counselors and other people have purchase our curriculum. So we have um, we have kids in divorce groups uh, in Colorado, in California, in Louisiana, in Kentucky, and then several here in Texas. And uh, it is still spreading and still it needs to be in many other states. I remember I was in Searcy, Arkansas taking care of my grandkids last year and I got a call from a lady in New Jersey I don't know how people get my number, but somehow they get my number. And I got a call from somebody in New Jersey, and it was a grandmother, and she was desperate for help for her grandkids. And people don't realize how it affects everybody in the family. So, anyway. What else was I supposed to say? <laughs> what, did you, what did you say? How have you seen God work through this? Give oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, you know, my brain just goes from here to here to here. And when you're... When you're thinking about, am I leaving? Am I talking too much? Are they gonna kids driving teachers crazy? You know, I'm like, I don't want to go over it today. So, um, so God is working through moving our curriculum, okay? And He is the guy in Denver was telling me last week that this is what this guy has done. He's fantastic. He is a lawyer actually, and he bought our curriculum. And he's a single dad, and he took this curriculum and he found a team of counseling students there at a local college, and he's trained them, and they take this curriculum to the school. He pays them because he's so passionate about helping kids in divorce, and he's also making a big difference in the court system for them there. So that's really, really good. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had the privilege of going to Wiley ISD counselors meeting, and uh, they actually contacted me. One of the lead elementary counselors from Wiley ISD contacted me and asked me if I had any resources um, on grief or if I could come speak on grief. Well, grief is not really my thing, even though grief is very, very, very involved in divorce. Um, I'm not the expert on grief, and I knew one, so I said, I'll get you the expert, so I did, and we went to Wiley ISD, and I'm able to stand up and say who I am, I'm from North Point Church Christ, and we have this ministry for kids in divorce, which they already had in their hands, our information, because we had given that out at the first of school, so uh, to me, that's amazing, <laughs> That's not me doing anything. That's God working. When somebody contacts me and, <laughs> you know, can you help us with this? And we get the opportunity to share and do that. I just, I, I just think it's amazing. And then the other way God works through this is when people enter our building, and some of these people have God in their life and some of them do not. So this is a first touch thing for them to know God or to come to learn about God and experience people who love them unconditionally being the hands and the feet of Jesus. And let me tell you, little kids in divorce need to feel that. They need lots of love and lots of reassurance. And oftentimes the parents can't give it to them. So, therefore, it makes a big difference. And that's how I see God moving and working in this. Right, right. and one of the ways you see, she, she hit on it, is, you know, and we're going to talk about this now, I want to talk about, 
you know, how, how people can get involved in this here, um, in, in this community. How I can get involved in kids and divorce. And I'll just tell you right off the bat that, you know, you, you talk about what these kids, what these people see and what they, what they uh, you know, are impacted by when, when they come into a facility like this, when they come into a groups like this, seeing the hands and feet of Jesus, seeing you, us, people, being, being Jesus. Um, I'm telling you that, like, like I said in previously, if you're, if you're going to serve, serving is one of the most tried and true ways uh, for personal development. If you think God's going to work on you, he's going to work on you, oftentimes you're going you're gonna to know it. Like often, you don't real, sometimes you're growing and you don't realize it. But when you start serving with people, it's a challenge. And, and, and you, it, one of the primary ways that God works on us is through serving, okay? It, it, is, it is tried and true, okay? And, you know, one of the ways, in fact, that I got to know some of you here more intimately uh, was through serving because of divorce, because that all happened and coincided around the first time that, that we came here as well. Uh, I think Jordan and I, we worked together really well uh, in the first couple of sessions. In fact, I got to know Jordan really good. And you may not know Jordan. He may be quiet, but this guy's a lot of fun to be around. He really is. And he actually it's awesome facility. He can actually uh, maintain a room full of teens and maintain control, and he does it really well. Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, you see how God is developing people who serve in this as well. Okay, and so talk to us about how can we get more involved in kids and divorce. You know, touch on what it takes to to do this. Well, a lot of you already are involved because you provide. we provide a meal for our families, which is a really great thing for single-parent families to just come from work. Everybody's coming from work. Facilitators are coming from work. Families are coming from work or ball practice or whatever. And they can walk in and they can have a nice uh, hot meal uh, because you all provide that um, for us. And, and that's a very, very, very big blessing. Um, you can learn to be a facilitator. I'd love to have a fall team and a winter team so that we don't wear people out. Um, I mean, that would be a great thing. Uh, so anyone wants to train to be a facilitator, we can train you to be a facilitator. We need hosts and hostesses for our meals. Um, we're without that right now. And uh, I can do it after everybody gets in groups. It takes me a whole hour to get it cleaned up <laughs> all by myself. So if I had a host or a hostess, I'd get it done half the time. But, um, but anyway, that, that is a need that we have. And um, let's see, set up um, and clean up and all that kind of stuff is important. Uh, most of you may not know, but Elisa Hunter uh, is um, on our staff to help me six hours a week. <laughs> yes. And she is awesome, and she mainly gets all the curriculum and the tubs ready for kids in divorce. And biggest blessing ever. She helps me do a lot of other things, too. But uh, that has been a big blessing to have her on our staff helping us. And people don't know that, but she is on our staff. So Yeah, yeah, and she's a lot of fun to be around as well. If you want to get more involved because of the divorce uh, and you want a little bit more, maybe where you might fit, you might want to uh, you know, sit down with Beverly and contact her. Um, but to, to close us out here, let's, this is the fun part. This is what I like. Let's talk about your vision for this ministry. Okay, let's dream for us a moment. Okay. Well, a lot of times when you go through a divorce, there are radical changes, and they happen very quickly. Like, somebody has no place to go. Somebody has, a, you, you need a, a place to live immediately, and you don't have one. Um, you may need a job immediately. If you've been a stay-at-home mom, and all of a sudden, you got to be the breadwinner. Um, so, there are many, many changes and things that happen, and... Many, many losses for people who go through a divorce, especially the children. So imagine when your world is turned upside down and you're all of a sudden here and you have two parents and all of a sudden you have one and this one is out of sight completely and then you're moving to a place you've never been and you lose your, your um, school and you lose your church and you, you lose your friends or your sports team or your wherever you went to gymnastics or whatever and it's all different and I want to this is one of my dreams I want a house I see it in my head okay it's a big two-story house and it's yellow don't ask me why 
But that's what I see. But I see a safe place, and and there are safe places for women who have been through abuse, and and we have single dads too, okay? So, but I want a safe place, or I don't care if it's a dad or mom, where they can come, spend a while, get a direction in their life, get some help making the decisions they need to make, because what happens oftentimes is they make very poor choices because they're hurting so badly. And because they do that, then their kids suffer. And I would love some place where the kids could come. There's a playroom. There's some trained play therapists in there to help them, or even kid work or kids in divorce facilitators. And um, we could help those families through the initial stages of a divorce. So that's one. Of, if I could. If I could invent something, if I had a million dollars, I'd have them all over the United States, <laughs> you know, but um, because I see the need for it. And um, anyway, that's one of my big dreams for, kids for this. House. Yeah, a kids in divorce house, a, a place of refuge yeah. for people that are hurting. Yes. So we're in the, the final, uh, we're in the fall session, right? How many more weeks we have left of this one? I think we have three, three left. Weeks. Yeah. The next session is going to start up. It'll start in January. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in January. So if you or you know of anyone, okay, um, who has in, been impacted by a kid's divorce and might benefit going through this, um, let them know. And keep an eye out for advertisements for when this next session uh, comes up. As we mentioned, there's a lot of volunteers uh, who kind of help this ministry keep rolling, has over the last few years. If you volunteer, have volunteered as a facilitator or in any other way with Kids of Force, will you please stand? Yeah, if you brought food, please stand up. I know you don't like to do that, but we appreciate you. people. Thank you guys. If you are a facilitator, will you please join me up on stage here? I want to pray over... Um, Beverly and the facilitators, if you are facilitating now or have facilitated in the past, uh, and or maybe maybe you want to facilitate, come on up here so she'll uh, you keep can, an eye out on that. Can I say one thing? This is our scripture for kids in divorce, and that's God heals the brokenhearted. He bandages their wounds, and that's um, Psalm 147.3. That's our scripture for them. Okay. So here are our facilitators, and again, if look... Uh, I know it may seem intimidating to you to think to be a facilitator, but I'm telling you, it is easy. Like, Nolan could even do this, okay? <laughs> I guess, I'm just, today is just a day for you. You'll get me back one day. So, uh, but seriously, though, honestly, it is, it is, I think Nolan would be really good at it, actually. Um, it is very easy to do, okay? You'll be trained, and I'm telling you, it's, it's a blessing Okay, to be involved and engaged in this way. And it'll challenge you, it'll grow you, uh, and you'll be making a big impact on somebody else's life, okay? In such a way that you, you won't even realize it. You won't even know how much of an impact you have on them, okay? And that's kids in divorce. And so I'm going to close this out and we'll pray over kids in divorce facilitators. And I'm asking if you're going to you, you please stand. Continue to keep them in your prayers. In fact, continue to keep all of our ministries in prayer. You know, praying for five loaves, praying for hope mommies, praying for uh, kids in divorce, praying for our, our children's ministry, team ministry, all the things that we are engaged in here. We have some, some things that are in the pot right now that I'm hoping in the future we'll be able to talk about a little bit more, but continue to pray for North Point, okay, and for the lives that, uh, that God is sending us that we're able to impact. And so if you'll bow with me, our Father, we thank you. We thank you for the, the vision for uh, such a ministry as this. Um, we hate the fact that we need it. It's, uh, it's horrible, and it's, it's just it's so devastating, but we're so thankful for the vision to bring uh, some sense of restoration and healing, uh, some sense of hope and guidance to walk alongside those who are blinded, who, who feel paralyzed, who are, are just affected in such a way by kids in divorce, by, by divorce, and I pray that uh, through kids in divorce that they will continue to, be, uh, to, to receive uh, what they need. And I uh, pray that you continue to open up the doors and to be open so that we might continue to facilitate such a process uh, that people can see your son through us as we are the hands and feet of Jesus. We're thankful for Beverly. We're thankful for all those who uh, uh, just continue to volunteer to, uh, to provide meals, to sit down with uh, these, these the children, the teens, and the, and the adults who are affected by this and to... I just open up their ears and their hearts to listening and to
being giving some sense of guidance. And so I pray you continue to blessings on this ministry as we as we raise it up to you and we put it in your hands. It's in Jesus that we pray. Amen.